Hi, and welcome to another video brought to you by PLCGurus.net. So you are following along in our Studio 5000 Essentials video series. Uh, and today what I wanted to look at was something known as user-defined types, or UDTs, in a Studio 5000 environment. So this tutorial is going to cover the following. Creating a user-defined type, or UDT for short. Creating a tag from a UDT using a UDT tag in an instruction, and using some of the tag monitor editor features to see the tag in action, okay? So what is a UDT and what is it good for? So a UDT is good for organizing related data into a single structure. A UDT allows a single tag to hold multiple members. Each member can be given a unique name to describe the data it holds. The members are accessed by the main tag name followed by a period, followed by the member name. Okay, so as your programs and applications get more complex, the need or the efficiency that UDTs gives us becomes very, very apparent, okay? Let's just cover the example that we're gonna go ahead and, and jump over to our, our Studio 5000 and create, but let's talk about the example a little bit just to set it up, and hopefully it'll become clear the advantage of using a UDT in this type of scenario. Okay, so let's imagine we have a conveyor with 20 plus motors on it. And let's also say that each motor will have the following attributes associated. And this isn't a stretch, and this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but I think it'll drive home what we want to do here. So every motor presumably will have a motor start push button, a motor stop push button, a motor overload, and perhaps a motor on fault if we have some fault logic that monitors, if we command a contactor to turn on, it doesn't turn on in a certain period. And the, the reverse of that, a motor off fault, okay? So we have five attributes associated with each motor. So if we were to create a tag for each attribute for each motor, we're essentially creating a hundred different tags to accomplish this. So I've got a little excerpt here and hopefully this makes sense. For each motor, we would need to create, a, say, a motor 1, M1, motor start, PB, mo motor stop, PB, motor overload, motor on, motor off. And then for the next motor, M2, we call, we would have a motor start push button, a new tag, motor stop, a new M2, motor overload, etc., etc., motor 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I think you get the picture. Okay, so if we had to create a new tag for each one of these features for each motor, this would be extremely tedious and horribly inefficient. Okay, so let's look at a better way to do this. So here we are over in our virtual machine. So let's go ahead and look at what we were talking about initially if we didn't use UDT. So I'm just going to go over to the uh, controller tag database and let's start creating some new tags okay and let's I'm just gonna unpin this here just get it out of the way and let's start so we're gonna call it m1 um, motor start PB so I'm just showing you uh, the I guess the inefficient way by which we could go ahead and add all of these 20 motors um, to our controller tag database by creating a new tag for each motor for each instance uh, of motor that we need to create okay and we said we had 20 motors okay so motor overload and of course I'm not gonna do um, all 20 because that would just take a tremendous amount of time and not the focus of the video but you can see here, here I'm going M1 uh, motor on P or fault. You can see here, I would kind of go about this for all 20 of my motors and it would be horribly inefficient and I'd be spending all day doing this. Okay, and then I would start into motor two, uh, motor start PB and you get the picture, right? Boolean, of course, I haven't added any descriptions here. So we'd have to add an individual description. We'd have to say motor one, motor start, push button, you know, this kind of thing. And then we do motor one, 
motor stop, push button, and you can see this would just be a, a colossal waste of time. But, I mean, it would work. I mean, don't get me wrong. This mechanism, by creating all of these different tags, so five different tags for each motor, would get the job done. Don't get me wrong. It would work. But let's look at the more efficient way by which we can do this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete those tags for now because we're not going to use them. And now let's head on over to, to the data types folder here. And what we're interested in today is the user defined data types. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and right click on that. And I'm going to say new data type. And here we go. So you want to give your data type a name. So I mean, it makes sense that we would call it motor. Okay, and we'll call it, um, I don't know, motor my motor data type my motor data type and now we start adding members of that to that motor or attributes that we want that we can access using the dot notation that we talked about or the period okay so we're gonna have something called motor start PB so look what we're doing here so we're effectively doing what we did okay and this will be motor start push button and we're gonna move on, oops, we're gonna move on to the next one. Motor stop PB, this is great. I mean, wait till you see this in action. You're gonna be like, wow, this is, if you, especially if you've been doing it the other way the whole time, um, this is a huge time saver for many reasons as a developer, a designer, a programmer. Uh, this is motor overload, sorry. I'm getting confused talking and typing at the same time. Uh, but huge time saver motor on fault okay and again a boolean uh, motor oops motor on fault and then we had motor off fault okay so wait till you see this this is just this is this is this is the best thing since sliced bread I, I kid you not okay here we go okay so we're gonna click apply on that and here we go okay so notice nothing is in my controller tag database, nothing is in my program tag database yet, but we do have our motor data type here. Now watch this. I'm gonna go right into my uh, main routine and now I'm gonna add some logic here. Okay, I'm just gonna add some instructions in here. Um, let's just, yeah, let's just add some stuff. Why not? And you know what, let's just drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's actually drive it map it to an output um, actually let's just do a real world output here so we'll go right to our output module 04 data if you haven't watched the previous videos I do recommend you do that so you know what it is I'm doing here um, so we're gonna say this is our actual contactor output for say the first motor and we could go right into the um, controller tag data but actually let's do that let's before we do this let's let's go ahead and map some of the contactors um, just give them some description so we know what they are. So we'll call this motor one. We'll call this motor two. We'll call this motor three. We'll call this motor four. And maybe we'll just do five for the point of this video, but you could go on for 20 motors. Okay, so let's get back here. You can see it's motor one now. It corresponds to this output here. And now watch this. Now this is where the power of UDTs really comes into play here. So I'm gonna go new tag, and I'm gonna call this tag M1. Now, what I wanna do is, for the data type, I wanna say that it is a, not a Boolean, I'm gonna go down to my list of data types and I'm going to find my motor data type here. Now watch this. As soon as I tell it that this tag is of type motor, this tag instance is going to inherit all of the attributes of the motor type that we just defined, okay? So let's take a look. So now, there it is, my motor data type, okay? But it doesn't do anything yet. Watch this, I'm gonna double click the blue bar, I'm gonna hit the drop down. Oops, and I'm gonna go hit the drill into the M1 tag now. Now look at this. 
Now all of those attributes associated with my first motor are there. There's my motor start push button. Look at this. I'm going to drag that over. There's my motor stop push button. Look at this. Isn't this fantastic? Motor overload. Okay. And well, let's just seal this in. Why not? Okay. So look at that. Isn't this fantastic? Okay. So let's go ahead and add another rung now. Of We'll add the same instructions. We're just doing something very simple here. And let's go ahead and add the next motor. So we're going to drag that over. We're going to make this data point one. This is now motor two. I'm going to same workflow here. I'm going to go ahead, new tag. I'm going to call this one M2. And again, this is of type motor. Oh, I know you're, if you're like me, when I when I learned this, I was um, I was pretty excited. I thought this was just fantastic. M2. And there we go. There's M2. Now look, bang. All of my attributes are there. Now I just pick them off. Look at this. Look, I could just go this way if I wanted to and just change that to a two. Or I could just go M2, start typing dot, and it populates. It knows exactly what I'm after. And bang, we go again. And notice I'm not having to type in comments. I mean, this my motor data type thing is kind of silly. Uh, we could go edit that by going properties. Maybe I will just delete the description so it doesn't show up on every tag. Click apply and look, bang. It populates all the way through for every every tag that uses that data type. Okay, so let's do it again. I'm just going to copy this logic this time. Then I'm going to change it to motor three. We're going to create a new tag now. Watch this. New M3. And it's going to be of type motor again. Create. And there we go. M3. No more com typing comments in for each one. And away we go here. So I hope this example really drives home the power of user-defined types, or UDTs for short. Like I say, this is a perfect example of why it is very hugely efficient to use UDTs, particularly when you have many, many instances of the same type of object, okay? In this case, a motor. And that motor has common attributes across your whole, you can begin to build genericism or, or generic types into your software. And like I say, for reusability, for large scale uh, integration and development, um, you can't beat it. You really can't beat it. And you could do that 20 times and look how simple I'm not typing in any comments. Okay, so I think I'll leave it there. I hope you found this video informative. Please uh, like our channel, subscribe to our channel, check us out at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net and become an active member in our community. And thank you for watching.